That normally people would bleed a callus I gotta step on my game I gotta push until all of my energy drains Only to see what you feel in the day I'm missing you back to back to back to back to back Always get to tell you, never show you I be lacking that I hope your prayers answered Cause no, I can't imagine If they just fade and vanish Yeah And if they break and damage Then I'ma be the bandage That puts them back together Yeah See you back to back to back to back to back Nights in my place and I need you in my habitat We don't need a time and a place So yeah, baby, face it You work overnight and I'll be your day I'm missing you back to back to back to back to back Nights in my place and I need you in my habitat We don't need a time and a place So yeah, baby, face it You work overnight and I'll be your day Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Bleed Black and Gold podcast presented by Boston Sports Syndicate. Don't adjust your monitors. Don't adjust your radios. We are uh, live on Twitch for the first time uh, with the Boston Sports Syndicate Bleed Black and Gold podcast. So we're going to get right into it. Uh, Michael Travers here bringing it to you. Uh, Joining me, I can't tease it because everybody can see them, so it's not really going to be a big surprise. But Wobble plays first up. Wobble, how's it going? I'm doing well. I'm excited to be here. I love the new layout, and uh, yeah, it's been good. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited. It's going to be a, a a little bit of a challenge, I think, as you can tell, as we were uh, 15 minutes late or so. Um, but I- anyway, we're uh, <laughs> we're here. We're on Twitch, and we also have Mr. Ryan Daly, aka Big Country. Uh, Ryan, what's going on? He's either frozen or muted, or I don't know what he's got going on. He's muted. 
So we're gonna we're gonna introduce him after, I guess. We'll we'll let him get himself situated. He's fine. I'm sure he's fine. Yeah, who we don't. He's he's not panicking at all or confused. But anyway, when once he figures himself out, we will we will get it sorted out. So maybe it's he was playing with his dog and you know before during the intro, so he couldn't uh, couldn't couldn't really get going. But anyway, uh, I want to thank everybody who has tuned in so far for Twitch. Uh, like I said, we are live on twitch.tv slash Boston Sports Syndicate. So if you're listening to this later, head on over there, um, toss us a follow. Uh, we're hoping for uh, some pretty cool things coming with with, with the Twitch and um, you know some of the other things that we have going on. And you know if Ryan can ever figure out how to get in here and join us, maybe we can uh, maybe we can start talking Bruins. But um, we'll have to wait for him, I guess. I don't know. But um, Waba, yeah. let's get into talking about the Bruins. Um, and obviously, the season is uh, over. And we're we're heading we're looking towards the playoffs and we're heading towards a, a Stanley Cup. So I want to start with you. Get your general thoughts here as to what you think or, or how you thought the season went. Um, you know where they ended up. How did how did how did this go for them? Um, you know, kind of give me a give me your uh, your takes. A a true roller coaster, as it were. We we start with you. Okay, you probably don't feel this way because you're just. He has a very different outlook on the team than I do. So we lost Chara. Sad days. Very sad. Uh, then sad they start for playing for, 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 the, for the loyalists like me. Chara leaving value means... heart and grit over points and goals. Chara Char leaving means Bergeron gets the C. So it worked okay, out. Fine, it worked out. Fine. I know. I know. It's just it was it was uh, conflicting. But, you know, they, they do fine. I mean, they have good talent. They just can't figure out where to fit it. They get what, uh, you know, Smith in the offseason. They've got some new young guys coming up. Trent Frederick is obviously, you know, the best player in the NHL. And then they just lose players to injury and they just aren't doing well. And it looked grim. And then we hit the trade deadline and we get hallelujah hall pass and everybody else. And now I, this team is going to win every game in the playoffs. They're not going to lose. It's going to be nuts. And that's how I feel. I just it's it's I feel so reinvigorated and I want to say I was right. I was right they have a chance they did it and you were wrong. So according to you they're going to go 16 and 0 here. They're going to go 18 and 0. That's they're, how good they are. They're, they're going to go Oh yeah, that worked out for the Patriots. They're going to go 16 <laughs> and 0. Uh so, you know, I, I mean that's first of all you're absolutely crazy. Ryan, have you figured it out yet? Unless you can hear him, I can't hear him. Nope. So, all right. So uh <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time us trying to do something different without without having it you know completely blow up um so first of all you're crazy thinking that the bruins are going to go 16 and 0 uh secondly i want to do something that i don't do very often but you know it's a special occasion so i want to uh apologize and say that i was wrong yes not to you. I don't care about apologizing to you. Okay. I'm. I just want to apologize in general because if you remember on the last bleed black and gold show that we did, I said the Bruins need to sell this team's. This team's not going anywhere. This team's not doing anything. Basically, I said this team sucks, and uh, they did the exact opposite. And luckily, they didn't listen to me. And they went out and they obviously brought in Hall and Lazar and um, the defenseman Mike Riley and. The team has the team looked like a completely different team down the stretch there, and that was turns out exactly what they needed to do. They needed to they needed to 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 have some sort of uh, you know injection into the arm and 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 figure out what 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 you know Hall was the answer. Now is he the answer long term? That's a different question. We'll get to that later. Whenever Ryan can can figure out his his audio issues, maybe disconnect and come back in. Nope, still can't hear you. Maybe. Nope, still can't hear you. I can read your lips, but I can't hear you. So it's not great for the people on the podcast at home uh, that are listening. But the uh, his whole answer long term that's that's that remains to be seen. But for the short term, he has absolutely injected energy into David Krejci, and it is a delight to watch. David Krejci is one of the best passers in the NHL, in my opinion, and he's just never had. You, you have an elite scorer. He goes and plays with Bergeron and Pasternak. You have a, an elite playmaker, an elite player, and he also goes and Brad Marchand and goes and plays with with Bergeron. And 
Krejci just gets like the scraps. He gets like the 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 corpse of Jake DeBrusque. And can you hear me now? Yes. 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 I mean, he's... I have to use a different mic. He switches over to the reason, headset. My mic just now you stopped look working. Like a true like uh, announcer. Are you conducting a plane? What is what is going on <laughs> over there? So anyway. Well, anyway, welcome to the show, and uh, thank you, thank you for joining us. Uh, your thoughts on the Bruins, how the season ended, the way their season went? G- give them to me. Lay them on me. Uh, so the last time we recorded was right before the trade deadline, and at that point, I was I didn't think the Bruins were going to make the playoffs. I was like, this team d- doesn't have it, and Sweeney just you know. Did what Sweeney did. I'll keep it PG. Um, it went out, got Hall, got Riley. Riley was probably the biggest surprise for people who didn't really know Riley at all. I mean, he. I feel like he just made that defensive core that much stronger. To be fair. And any, now that everyone any, is getting healthy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. We're any gonna... other move other than Taylor Hall is isn't under the radar move because you went out and got Taylor Hall. Mind you, in that deal, you also got Lazar, who solidified your fourth line and is a legitimate energy guy, not a Froderick, if you get what I'm saying, energy guy. (laughs) He's a legitimate energy guy. I don't get what you're saying. And he's a a skilled player who also – and the, the, I said this on the main show, the flagship show, the, the craziest thing to me about Lazar is the first thing he said in an interview is how much he loved to kill penalties. Who does, like, who thinks that way, first of all, like lunatics think that way and say like, not, I love to score goals. I'm so happy to be, I love to kill penalties. What? Like, who yeah, even... just let me stand in front of a slap shot. Yeah, right. Let me, Put let my me... life in danger. Yeah, in exactly. Exactly. So any move, I, I feel like Riley and Lazar both underrated, flew under the radar because of the acquisition of Taylor Hall. And, and that's, I feel like no matter who you get, short of like McDavid or Crosby or something stupid, the next thing after Taylor Hall is not going to be a big deal or as talked about. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, I completely agree with you. And if, if you guys recall, I, I, didn't, I said I didn't even want Hall. I mean – after seeing the way he played on, you know, Edmonton, New Jersey, Arizona, Buffalo, you know. Didn't he have a 100-point season in New Jersey? He Win did. the MVP? Was, I, I would hate – I would yeah. really hate okay, that Okay, that was guy. one season. That no, was the year right. he got traded. He you're just right. pulled the right. Joe Thornton. That's you're all. Right. And then did nothing after that. You're right. So, um, but no, he's been – like, you could tell – you could tell he's having fun again. You could tell that – competitive edge is back which obviously he was missing playing on teams that well sucked um so i mean and he's not the main guy which is the biggest thing for him even though he was drafted number one overall all these teams wanted him to be the number one he is literally the fifth fiddle on the bruins if not the sixth like so that's i think that's good for his mental you know, and his game as well. And can we just say how much this past 10 years of Krejci not having a winger of his caliber to play with, you just see how much Krejci's game has elevated since he's been here. We would and have won Craig every Smith Stanley as Cup. Well. I'm te- it's I'm, insane. Yeah. I'm telling you, he just, he just, he just got completely like, like just completely rejuvenated basically with, with, with getting a legitimate winger. And it's, it, you're right. It's incredible to see the level of, which you always knew we had. And, and he's, he's always been an incredible playmaker and, and a, an incredible passer, but he never had a guy to finish. And it was supposed to be Kasha last year. And it was supposed to be Rick Nash. It was supposed to be this guy. It was supposed to be that guy. It was supposed to be this guy. Finally is worked. And, and, and Hall is that guy. And, uh, I, I, I said the same thing, and it, it, while I said I didn't want them to make any trades and I wanted them to sell, if they the rumor last time we recorded was, hey, let's go. Let, the Bruins should get Taylor Hall. The Bruins are in on Taylor Hall. The Bruins are in on Taylor Hall. Which, by the way, from my understanding, Taylor Hall did them a huge solid. Taylor Hall basically said, right. I want to go to the Bruins or I want to go nowhere else. I'll veto a trade anywhere else. So Buffalo just kind of like had to take a second round pick and a bag of pucks for him. And get wrecked. And, and and he basically did the Bruins did the Bruins a solid. From my understanding, now how much of that is actually true, I don't know, but. But it, 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 it seems like he did them a pretty good solid. And so 
he and he's come here and he's 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 lit it up. He's been impressive in that that second line and it's it's given them a legitimate chance. And while I didn't want them to make a trade, I said if they do get Hall, it could be a perfect situation be, for him because you match him with Krejci because he doesn't have to be a superstar because because he doesn't have he won't be on a team that has a constant losing mentality. Arizona, New Jersey, um, wherever he just went, Buffalo, Buffalo. <laughs> and so like it, it just it. It was a perfect situation for him, and now he has a decision to make. And I'll, I'll ask you guys. I mean, three, four weeks ago, whenever we recorded last, I didn't want them to re-sign Krejci. I was like, I'm out. Let him go. He's overpaid, overpaid. Now, I want them to re-sign both of them. Yes. Yeah, both of them. They can. If, they can. If, if they both have to take a hometown discount. They both need to make less they- money than – Bergeron, Pasternak, and Marchand. They have they have to. I think Bergeron is like six seven five. Krejci seven and a half. Cannot continue that way. Krejci's great, great. Cannot continue that way. They they both need to take call it in the neighborhood of five. And whether they're going to do that or not, I don't know. But that's what I would like to see happen now. I think Hall will. I like the interviews we're seeing. He's like, I'm having so much fun. It's unreal. Like he scored more in the first four games than he did in like the up until the trade deadline in Buffalo. Well, well, he to be fair, two of He's his first fun. two of his first four games were against that horrible crap bag team. Th- three of his first four games, I think, were against that horrible team, Buffalo. And how how like poetic justice was that when he starts lighting it up on, again? Like, hey, you like that's a good proof. It's like you held me back. Well, no, it's not me. It's mm, you. Mm. And now he's on a good team, and he that's has the, the player. That's the thing is 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 now he's winning and now he's and 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 honestly it was a great thing that they played horrible teams when he first got here so he could score because if he didn't score in the first few games that he was here, we're having a very different conversation about the player oh, right now. Never mind what we'd be saying about Sweeney and how horrible he is and and you know keep it PG for for big country's sake and and that kind of stuff. But we'd have a completely different conversation about the player himself and and we'd be. Uh, you know, dumping all over him and and how he's this loser and all that kind of stuff. So that's and I think it was very very beneficial and and, and awesome for him to, to come in and start off as you know as hot as he did and and now he's been able to continue it. So and he's been in addition to the power play, which has been an, another uh, another huge aspect to this team. And and I just think that by by bringing him in now too, you also slot everybody slots to where they should be. DeBrus can get off of the second line. Um, Coyle can Coyle can do co- co- what Coyle does, and he's elevated Craig Smith's game, who was, by the way, playing well with Bergeron and and, and Marchand too. So, you know, it, it just everything seemed to come together in, over the last three four weeks of the season here, and and uh, we turn we turn our wheels towards the playoffs. So, um, Waba thinks they're going to go sixteen and zero in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, do you have a more real optimistic? I mean, a, a more realistic outlook? As to as to as to what you're what you're expecting from this team here, uh, yeah. So I'm cur- I'm like I'm currently writing an article for like looking at the entire NHL for the playoffs. I'm literally waiting for the Vegas, actually no, the Colorado LA Kings game to finish tonight to see who does win the President's Trophy, so I can finish the article. But um, I think the Bruins, the Bruins, I think the. I think the Bruins could go to the Stanley Cup final. I really do. Uh, do I think they're going to win 16 in a row? No. I think probably the Washington series is going to go either six or seven. And then I, out of the three teams in the East, I think Washington is going to be Boston's toughest matchup. I think they more just by the recent, recent games I've seen since the trade deadline. I do feel that the Bruins have played much better against the Islanders since the deadline, and they've played, they've been playing well against Pittsburgh all season. So I can see the look on Trav's face. <laughs> he d- disagrees. Um, I disagree, and I agree because I, I, I mean, to, they're gonna go to the. They nope, could, nope, can't do that. They could. Yeah, you can't one. do that. Well, you made more than one point. <laughs> so you made more than one point. So let me, let me tell you what I disagree with that they. I mean, I mean, yes, of course, they could go to the Stanley Cup Finals. Every team in the playoffs could go to the Stanley Cup Finals. The Kings, as the eighth seed a few years ago, won the Stanley Cup. And I say a few years ago. That was probably over 10 years ago now, but uh, six years ago, whatever it was. But, yes, they could go to the Stanley Cup Finals. Realistically, it is 
a gauntlet to get out of this division. And it that is going to be awesome for the viewer, horrifying for the fans, because it's going to be... It, you're right in the fact that you say that Washington is going to be their toughest test in this division. I think Tampa Bay is legitimate. And oh, by the way, they're getting Kucherov back, if I'm not mistaken, uh, who and they haven't Stamkos. had all season. And, and Stamkos. And Hedman. And Vasilevsky. And they're returning uh, Stanley Cup champions. So... Let's go Panthers. But, but just in the East. So, so every, I, what I've heard a lot of is how horrible the East Division is. Oh, the East Division sucks. The East Division sucks. The East Division sucks. Yeah, Buffalo blows. Okay, cool. No problem. Let's move on from that. Buffalo is terrible. The worst team in the league. Mm, actually, it might not even be points wise. They've been decent over the over the last two two months. Not good. Not great. Not good. Decent. But when you look at the Rangers. Eh, young team, up and coming, whatever. Flyers were supposed to be good, just were terrible. They choked all season. Devils, same thing. The Devils, the Devils to me are supposed to be a good team. I can't figure it out. You know, they had Paul Mary. I know they traded him. They had Subban. Um, even when they had Hall, they were supposed to be good, and they just they just weren't. I don't I don't understand. The top four teams are legitimate Stanley Cup contenders. The Bruins, the Penguins, the Capitals, the Islanders, legitimate Stanley Cup contenders. Uh, all had over 70 points, which I don't think happen in any other division. I'm checking it as we speak. No, not even cl- mm, the central. Uh, the Predators got in with 64. Everybody else had at least 70. But Islanders at 71 points are the fourth seed in this division. Any four of these teams, Seattle, Kraken are better than Buffalo. Shamrock saving that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout out James Kim. Um, the 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 Islanders getting in at the four seed at 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 seventy one points shows that this division does not in fact suck. Okay, what sucks is the North Division where the Maple Leafs win it with seventy seven and the Canadians with less than sixty points get in. They had a negative goal differential and they get in. The Blues, negative goal differential, 61 points. They get in. The Central Division, 64 points. Predators, they get in. The North Division sucks. Like We'll, we'll yes. throw that one out. We'll, we'll throw that one out. But this, this, divi- this, this is the hardest division to come out of, in my opinion, right now, in the playoffs. So, yes, they could make it to the, to the Stanley Cup Finals, but realistically, they also could very easily lose in five to the Capitals. And, no, and, 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 and it's going to make them better. Listen, the Capitals play big boy hockey, and we all love the big bad Bruins, but this is not the, the 1970s anymore. That's not the way. Like, look at what the Blues did to them a couple years ago. They bodied them around, and they ended up beating them. They were the far, the far inferior team, talent-wise, but they played the body, and that's exactly what the Capitals do: is they they play the body, and they're big, and they have your boy Chara. So you really should be torn, Waba. I am. It's actually incredibly painful internally, but I think it's going to be a good test. The Bruins are going to either fight God or become him, and they're going to. <laughs> Come out of what? this a stronger team. Is that from Batman? I don't know what it's from. I saw it on TikTok. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna say, Ryan? But the Providence Bruins almost beat the Capitals. Oh my God! On... Miss exactly. me with that uh, on on Tuesday night. So the Bruins, should, uh, according to Waba, should just sweep them. I was I was I, just, I had to beat Waba to it. I had I, that's to actually that was a good tweet. I thought, and everybody's <laughs> like, "You're wrong." I'm like, you know what? You don't know. You, you, you don't know highbrow humor, Twitter. Oh, miss me. That Come on, is... Cam Hughes is the next the next stud. Like... Dude, and, and Tom Blyde, my duty <laughs> follows me on Twitter. Let's go, dude. But, What's up? I mean, to you don't think Tom go Wilson's going to get suspended this series? Pull no. a Kadri uh, and just no. cross-check someone into the shadow realm and get five games? We went, we went over this, we went over this last time. Season. I would take Tom Wilson on my team. I would take Tom Wilson on my team. I honestly, I would. I said, I'm pretty sure I said that last time. And uh, even with his latest antics, which he didn't get suspended for, ironically, and I don't understand why, but uh, would still take him. Would absolutely take him because that's a guy you need to pay attention when he's on the ice. You cannot let your guard down when he's on the ice. You need to, you need to, you, you need to pay attention and you need to be aware. And he makes your play a little, uh, a little skittish, get a little, poop, a little bubbly guts while he's out there and not just to ask. Everybody gets them. So I, I, 
I don't know, man. I, I think Washington's Washington's going to be a tough test. And then either the Penguins... I will never, ever doubt a team that has Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin until you win that fourth game in that series. Because I think there's just so much talent between those two. And, and to me, the biggest the biggest difference maker for Bruins Capitals will stay... We'll, I don't want to get too far down the line, but Bruins, ta- uh, Bruins Capitals, goaltending. Goaltending is 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 going to be is going to be a difference maker and has to be a difference maker and realistically it should favor the Bruins. Okay, I was I was wondering where you were going with that. I think the Bruins have the strongest goaltending in the East. In the East division. Yes. I, so I'm I just 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 for the record I'm correlating the east to being the central in the east because to me that's just the eastern conference with like a couple okay. of, a couple of teams mixed in um but if you're talking about the east division you're probably right i mean two garaskas no probably. i am right are you, are you talking yeah. are you talking i mean in the playoffs you shouldn't see a goalie tandem so everyone's concerned everyone's all you know what who, who's gonna be the backup all oh, swayman's the backup swayman's the next thing this is the sway right waba and so it is <laughs> and so, but, but you know something? If my backup goalie, regardless of who it is, if it's Swayman or Halak, if they're seeing time in the playoffs, we have bigger problems, in my well, opinion. Well, well I, I know last year was a different story, but like we found ourselves in a situation where we didn't have Tuca. Now, I'm not saying, again, that was a different situation. I don't want to get into it, but let's say Tuca gets hurt. I don't think that the team, and I, I like Halak, I don't think he's going to take you there. And we, we saw it last year where, let's say Tuka gets hurt or something happens. I know he had that back issue. When you put Swayman in, I think a lot of people, not just the fans, because we don't matter, but I think the team and the, you know, the coaching is confident that Swayman's the guy. And he showed it this year by just playing great for, you know, amazing for a rookie. So I think that's, that's what's important there. And I also think it, it adds a, a little competitive edge, you know. I mean, obviously, we started from the, in the bubble in the playoffs last year with Halak, and then this year, like, Halak was fighting for his job when he came off of COVID protocol. And the pressure, I think, kind of – those two games that Halak played, he did not look good. And even in the, the playoffs last year, there were some questionable goals that he let up, soft goals that he let up. I mean, I think, the, you know, Nothing against Halak. Halak has been great for us here in Boston, but it's just I think when the pressure came down to it, he just was not able to step up to the plate. And now you got this kid, Jeremy Swayman, coming out of the University of Maine, coming all the way across the world from Alaska, and is putting the pressure on Tuka Rask. He's, you know, I mean, and maybe that is a good thing for Tuka to have that pressure on and be like, yo, I don't, I don't want another Tim Thomas situation. I don't want, you know... Sway, you know, if I waver at all and, you know, Swayman comes in, you know, it'll be the same thing that happened in Washington, what, 2018. Grubar was the starter in Washington. And then he kind of fell off and hopefully came in and was like, I'm not losing this job. I'm winning this cup. And the Capitals went on to win the cup. Sometimes you need that competitive edge. And year after year, we see goaltenders will take a team to the final and win. I mean, yeah, Matt Murray. Ten did it. years ago, Matt Murray did it too with the Penguins when he when he when he dethroned uh, Mark Andre Fleury. How'd that work out? How, how's Matt Murray doing now? Oh, not on the Penguins anymore. They moved on to he's another got, young he's got goalie. Two cups. He's moved got on two, to another two young cups. goalie. I want the cup. I don't care if he's, he's washed up after this. Do you or he actually pulls the Tim let, Thomas and goes me, to let, the no, 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 I want the cup. Do do either of you legitimately, honestly, not for the show sake, not for the personality sake, honestly, fan sake, are you sitting on your couch in your undies, um, and and, and, and Tuka Rask comes out of game, call it two, okay? Comes out of game two with an injury. Are you sitting there saying, "Yes, Swayman time"? The Bruins are now going to win this series because Swayman's coming in. No, I'm not. No, saying you're not. And, and if, if Tuka Rask goes down, or if Tuka Rask is is not good, you're not winning. It doesn't matter who comes in, Halak or Swayman. It does you have not a better matter. Shot though, Rask is your Swayman. guy. No, he is. If it, when he went out, like when he went out last year, I, I was like, uh, "We're not doing it." But. If you have Swayman, you have a better chance than you do with Halak. And I think that's what's important. Now, it, hopefully, Tuka doesn't have issues. He's fine. He doesn't get hurt. But 
you have a better chance. And honestly, like that's the role. I think that's the role of the backup in the playoffs, not to take the spot, but to make sure that if something happens, you're in the best position you can be. And I think Swimman does that. Yeah, I think I, I'm not disagreeing that he's, he's he puts you in a better position than Halak does. I'm not going to disagree with that, but but just I, I I don't if you if Rask goes down, I think you're done. I think you're done. We have a question from the chat. This is the awesome. This is what I loved about when we did Twitch is that the questions mm-hmm. coming in from the chat, and it's like it's like our version of call-ins, basically. Teaser, we might have that soon. But well, that's like our time, version. It all, like s- sarcastic nonsense by me. I was basically just trying to get you guys to laugh by yeah. the most ridiculous garbage. Yeah. So and now here I am <laughs> saying it, and you guys have to listen to. Yeah. It. No. Now, now, now I now I openly invite it every episode. It's unbelievable. And I don't even. There's no. There's no off button. I can't mute you from here. So it's, it's tough. Uh, uh, Grez underscore forty four from the Twitch chat. Twitch TV slash Boston Sports Syndicate. If you are down 0-2 to the Caps in the series, do you put in Swayman or keep Tukes? Eye emojis. Either one of you can answer. It doesn't matter to me. Um, if it's, I don't know. It, if we uh, kind of recall 10 years ago, uh, the Bruins went down 0-2 to to Montreal in that first series. And what happened then? So I've kind of learned not to get too worried going down 0-2. We've seen, we've seen this Bruins team come back from tougher deficits to, to win series. So would I get away from Tuca that quickly now. Tuca Tuca will be in there until Cassidy feels that, you know, Tuca is not on his game, not there mentally, which we've seen it in the past. Um, I think that would be the only time you would see Swayman come in. But I think Tuca having that in the back of his head, knowing that Swayman could come in and steal the job, I think is the best thing for Tuca. Do you think, do you think, go ahead, Baba. The only time you see Swayman is if we face Montreal in the playoffs and it's away games. <laughs> <laughs> if there's no fans, there's no ghosts, though. That's what I heard. The, the, the fans are the ones that bring the ghosts. So I'm just saying he, he doesn't play well in Montreal, even though they're better than that team. So um, that's yeah. when you'll see Swayman. The Swayman only time, the only time that more. could happen, I believe, is in the Stanley Cup Finals. It, exactly. That's the only, and that's, time the, that the, the, only the games that matter the most, but I, that's the only time we'll see him. The... Uh, question I was going to ask is is the impact of Swayman obviously is is fan wise has been fun to watch. If you're Tuka Rask right now, you have that little you know that mental thing that we've been talking about, and 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 you know he's he's gonna play a little bit better. Are you thinking about your next contract? Are you thinking about you know do you want to come back and be a Bruin? Are you thinking about playing for your job now? Where I don't know maybe three months ago he probably wasn't playing for his job. So it's not even about the playoff run for him. Is he is he playing for his his future job, his next contract. I mean, have we reached that point with Swayman? Actually, before you answer that, let me answer the O2 question. The only time we're going to see Swayman in this series is if Rask gets hurt, or in these playoffs, is if Rask gets hurt, or um, Ryan was right in saying that Tuka's is getting lit up and he comes in in relief. That's He's not starting a game in these playoffs unless Tuka Rask gets hurt. There's no way. There's no way. Rask playing for his future contract. What do you guys think? Um. Yeah, probably. I mean, ev- technically, everyone should be playing for their future contracts. There's more pressure on a contract year, and a young goalie's coming right. up. I mean, are you now? Are you seeing him play a little better, be a little bit more mentally engaged because of that? I would hope at this point in the season that that's in the back of his head, and his main goal is winning these playoff games and winning a Stanley Cup. That's what I hope. I hope that. As we've seen before, Rask can put himself into mental pretzels, and I really hope that his contract is not weighing on him to, you know, kind of waver in these playoffs. I want him to be focused on the game. I want him to be there mentally. I want him to be the Tuka Rask that we saw in 2019, the Rask we saw in 2013, the Rask we've seen for the past, you know, uh, 10, 9, 10 years. Like, I... Yeah, I, I've, I mean, I've said it before, I, and I've, I've been a Tuca, you know, fan on this podcast since day one. I've always backed Tuca, and when people even said trade him, get rid of him, he stinks. Halak should be the number one. Like, I've always, I've always backed Tuca, but I mean, I just, I'm hoping that he is locked in and is ready to go for this playoff run, which I do believe he will. And I think it's more. Yes, we're, we're talking the goaltending right now, but I I really do think this Bruins team, what I've seen since the trade deadline, 
can either play the big man game or they can play the fast pace game with the amount of uh, like skill that they've had. Not even just the top six, but the bottom six guys that they've rotated in and out of the, the lineup. But before we get into that, I'll let Wab answer the question. I just kind of got on a rant there. No, that's good. I, <laughs> I, I, I hope not. Because I know the last time they won, it was about Tim Thomas, and he was kind of there. And then, you know, they've, they've made it far, but they haven't gotten it yet, um, you know, year. Not year after year, but, like, very frequently. And I hope that him wanting to prove people, you know, prove him to himself he's a Stanley Cup goalie is enough motivation and not a contract. Because he's going to get a job. If he comes back to the Bruins, great. If he chooses not to, he's going to get a job. I mean, hey, I hear Seattle needs a goalie. But that you know, currently, currently they don't have anybody good in that, or anyone. No, they signed one player. They signed, they signed one, one kid. Player. They signed one twenty-one-year-old kid out of the queue. I, I hear he's uh, he's got he hasn't lost a game since. Has he's, he's been a stud for him. <laughs> he's he's, for him. Un, he's undefeated. Yeah. He's got the most goals on his team. But I just I don't know. I, I I hope that's not the case because I think he has a lot more to prove. I think people know he's a good goalie. I don't think that doubts that. If he doesn't come back, he's going to find a home. One thing that. Uh, one thing that that Ryan brought up that I want to touch base that I want to touch on is, and I hadn't even thought of this until he said it, but it's incredible to me how much the Tuker Tuker listen to me Tuker Tuker haters haters the Tuka haters really hate Tuka Rask because you think you think about like you think of, I mean when Halak was playing well it was oh get Halak in there trade Tuka who cares about him blah 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 now like this rookie comes up has a couple of good games oh trade Rask. They don't care who it is as long as it's not Rask. They don't. They don't care who it is. And I, I'm on uh, once again. I'm signing with Big Country. I gotta get new new material here because I'm agreeing way too much. But the I, I've been a Tuka Rask guy since since I think I was such a Tim Thomas hater. Yeah. Well, oh, listen. When you make saves, stay, when, listen. When you make a save and you're facing into the net, it's not an amazing save. You suck because you should not you're be facing inside of the net. No, listen, no, you're, listen, yeah, he's listen, using this listen, listen, force of, of the listen, earth. Listen, listen, that was adorable when 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 uh, Dominic Hashik was doing it, diving around. But when he was diving around and doing windmill saves, he was still facing forward. I feel like legitimately Tim Thomas must have made at least twenty saves facing into his net because he yeah, was you just have to spin. The Coriolis no, effect. Dude. No, it's it's a no. lot. It's really complicated. Mm, mm, miss, nope. Mm -mm. But anyway, I was such a Tim Thomas hater that I could not wait until the next guy stepped in. And and when it was Rask, and he was so he was so sound. He plays that Finnish hockey style where he's so sound and he gets big and he's in the butterfly and he's just so like techno like like Pekarene, just so technologically sound. It was incredible. It was amazing. So I'm a big two guy. I always have been. Would love to would would love to see him back. But I just want to touch on that because it was it was interesting. I hadn't thought of it that the 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 Tuka the haters really hate Tuka Rask, where they just start crying. They call for his job after a rookie has a couple of games. It, then their way, it'd probably be Swayman and then Halak in the playoffs right now, and Tuka would be sitting on the sitting in the rafters watching. But anyway, yeah, they would have Swayman and Vladar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no. Do you know why I like? No, Tim people Tom still so like Halak. People still like Halak. <laughs> Me and Tim Thomas are both bunker boys. Yeah, but he he took he took going into a bunker this serious like like you took it serious during a, a a global pandemic. He just did it because he's weird. Like he did it like fifteen years ago because he's a he uh, did he had it right he had it right. Yeah, he was he was so far ahead of the game that he was already in a bunker in Colorado in two thousand fourteen. He beat it by seven years. Well, to, I kind of want to touch. Uh, we were talking about like Tuka in his contract. I want to touch, you know, go back to Hall and Krejci. I mean, currently right now you got between Krejci, Tuka, and Hall, the cap hit is about twenty mil. If you could sign those three players for five mil each for three years, do it, do it. And then you still have another five mil to play with on top of that to re-sign these unrestricted free agents. You know, we you know, there's, there is going to be some players that are going to need to be re-upped. Um, so, but I mean, if you could get those three guys at five mil piece for three years and you know ride these guys for the next three years, let Swayman develop a little bit more. I mean, I know he's been playing at. You know, kind of top of his level at each level that he's played at. I mean, he was he he was setting records at University of Maine before you know he 
truck across Canada from Alaska to get to Maine. I guess he just really likes the cold. Yeah. And apparently he loves penalty shots. So. Yeah. Well, all we hear about is how he's a, he's not a weird goalie. He's not a weird dude. And I'm like, if you're not, if you're a goalie and you're not weird, uh, that makes you extra weird in my opinion. Yeah. And he's from Alaska and he chose to go to university in Maine. He's definitely weird. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, Maine, well, Maine might be a, a big time city compared to to, to Alaska. So, yeah, you know, yes, you know. seriously. And then, and then the he population comes Population increased by three. It must be an absolute <laughs> shell shock coming coming to the city of Boston. But right, uh, it's gonna be like wow, but the first time he goes out to eat after he comes climbs out of his bunker. I'm going to Chili's tomorrow. <laughs> no, the That's are why you? I have the background. Yeah, this is a Chili's background. I'm going there. I'm actually in person. I'm after two weeks. <laughs> I'm exiting my bunker. I'm reemerging from the world like Fallout, and. uh yeah. Gonna, well, I'm just going to walk in and be like, did you guys miss me? And they're going to be like, who are you? Yeah. What? Yeah. I've been getting takeout there so much, I'm single-handedly making sure Chili's doesn't go bankrupt. Uh, this also isn't an ad, but if they want to. Smart smart play. Should we Should we give him, let's give him like a 30-second read. Go ahead, Wobba. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> if I, yeah, I can. I have their menu memorized. Hey, do you like good food at good value? Go to Chili's where you can get the two for 25, where you get an appetizer, two entrees, and a dessert for $25. Or if you're sitting alone, you can get the three for 10. You can get an appetizer or drink and a meal for $10. Chili's, when you're here, you're not – it's not their slogan. Chili's, get the ribs. I don't know. I it was when we're, when we're here, we're fa- when we're here, yeah, we're the, family. When you're here, you're family. That's like, that's like a – what is that? Olive Garden. The two, oh, maybe you're right. Two, two for twenty five. I thought it used to be two, two for twenty. No, dude, infl- <laughs> dude the inflation hit everyone hard. Oh my god, COVID inflation. I don't know that the extra five bucks. I don't know if I can handle it. I'm out. I'm out. If it was two for twenty, I'd be in. Two for twenty. Yeah, the syndicate doesn't pay us enough to get a yeah, right. two for twenty five. I'll talk to the boss about that. Maybe get a raise or something. I don't know. We'll see. Um, <laughs> uh, I want, I want uh, predictions. Is is what is what I what I really want from you guys. Um. Not for the whole playoff, sixteen and all, but but I'm I'm talking first round, Bruins caps, some predictions, series predictions, and then a bold prediction if you if you can come up with one other than going four and zero, other than the Bruins sweeping, that's not a bold prediction, that's just idiotic. But go ahead. I mean, I said earlier Bruins and six. Any bold any bold predictions you might have for it? For the Bruins or the NHL in general? No, the, the Bruins. Just just in the first round. Just 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 right here in the first round. You know, it was you know, it's a crazy what we call them the Cindertakes. It's just a just a off the wall kind of uh, bold bold statement you think something that something might happen in the in the first round. I have a prediction. <laughs> Go. Tom Wilson and uh, Brad Marshan are both gonna get suspended for the series. They're gonna do That's a good one. Like- that's a good one. Both of them are going to get suspended? Yeah, because you can't just suspend one. Because let's say Wilson takes a run at someone and Frederick's not there to protect everyone like, you know, he would, obviously. Um, Marshane goes and, like, like, he takes a run at Pasta. Marshane goes up against him and they make an example because they don't want that nonsense in the playoffs anymore because they messed up towards the end of the season. If I were Brad Marshane, I would skate as far away from Tom Wilson as humanly possible. Because if I get under that guy's skin, like, I'm... No joke. I'm. I think he might pull a Happy Gilmore. Legitimately take a skate off and try and stab somebody. No joke. Like I feel like he's that type of crazy. Kind of like it. But I feel like he was. I, I do feel like he's that kind of crazy. Where I don't know that I would go anywhere near him. Honestly, the I'm end like, of the I'm season good. has not been kind to him. Between that, like you know the the brawls, the line brawls, and like the people mocking him, and then him ultimately like getting hurt, like. I don't. I I can't speak for the guy. I don't know him, but like that's gotta kind of hurt his pride if that's what he prioritizes. He's obviously a skilled skater, so it's kind of like he's a good player. He's a yeah, good. Yeah, like, I compare player. him to Martian in the sense of Martian doesn't have to do dumb stuff because he can play and he's more effective when he's on the ice. Tom Wilson, I think Martian's turned a corner. I don't think Tom Wilson has. I do want to. He could though. I do want to talk about the Tom Wilson stuff a little bit more and and and. How the league handled sure. it, how the Rangers handled it, and all that stuff. Hold on to that. I want to yeah, see that. Yeah, but that's, that's that. just my, my, my bold take for the, the first series. Do you have a bold take? Ke- Kevin Miller decapitates Tom Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, blood Kevin for the Miller. Blood God! <laughs> take him out. Drop some mitts right, at, right on opening draw. 
Kevin Miller lines up as a winger just to fight Tom Wilson right off the Kevin bat. Kevin Miller might be the only guy on the Bruins that could take Tom Wilson. Trent Frederick in, 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 in his little Trent uh, Frederick, his little kit. Go. No no chance. No chance. I, whacked by Ovechkin again and be up for three. Yeah, I, I don't think he has. I don't think he has any chance. Um, I don't. I don't think Frederick is going to see the ice during these playoffs. I need him to. Yeah, I don't think so to, either. To break your heart. I don't think well, so either. And I hope he does. He shouldn't see the ice, but that's neither here nor there. Um. <laughs> Series prediction. Oh. My heart wants to say Bruins and six. Really does. I'm going to say Capitals and seven. With the bold prediction, Chara scores the game winner. Stop. <laughs> because I feel You're like that's the only. That that's way. really the only way that this makes sense. That's the only. Like you realize that that's the only outcome. Now whether it's an overtime, it'll either be an overtime or the last like minute of the third period. Like it'll be a legitimate dagger to the heart of all Bruins fans when 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 Chara scores a game winning goal in a game seven. And I, that's the bold prediction. I I, I do think the Capitals are going to win the series in, in in seven. I think they're going to be. They're going to be too big, too heavy for the top two lines to handle. I think they're going to be able to line match their their uh, big guys against the top line, the perfection line. And then I think Ovechkin is going to have the ability to do whatever he wants. And if the Bruins take any penalties whatsoever, they're in trouble. But Game 7, Chara, game-winning goal, Capitals win. Dude, if I have to watch a season where Brady goes to Tampa and wins and potentially Chara goes to the Capitals and wins, I'm just going to watch soccer. I'll tell you what. <laughs> There's a Mookie Betts go to the Dodgers and win. And wins. Everyone's like, oh, God, you guys are so spoiled in Boston. It sucks. Recently, <laughs> it sucks. Why would you ever want to be a fan where your good players go somewhere else and you just watch them win while you sit at home while your management just sends everybody away? It sucks. And and the only team that has good players that can't figure it out at the Celtics. Like, like they, I forgot basketball was a sport. I don't even know. <laughs> like I don't know how to play it. Wait, they're still playing. I'm and that my, the Overwatch team sucks. Like it's just, it's awful. <laughs> what a, what a, what a difference a couple of years makes, huh? Right. Yikes. Dude. I mean, the, no, 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 no. Won the, everything. The Bruins are still good. The Red Sox are relevant. The the, the Celtics they have talent. So like, it, it's not it's not all bad. It just so happens that all of the superstars have left in the same three year span. And yeah. So sad, yeah, that, sad trombone. I, I sent Char a DM that he couldn't do that, and he said, "Yeah, don't worry about it." Yeah, so I got, we're good. I, I got you, fam. <laughs> uh, Tom Wilson. Let's talk about let's talk about this. This isn't really going to be Bruins related per se, but it's NHL, and this is you know, believe I can go. We cover Bruins and, and the NHL. So, um, the Tom Wilson stuff. Just that is what we'll call it. Stuff. So if you don't know what happened, look it up. It's too long to explain. Uh, basically, he was a huge scumbag. Beat on one dude, laying on the ice. Buchnevich beat on Buchnevich, laying on the ice, and then um, DDT'd um, Panarin. Panarin. Right? And Panarin had no helmet on, and he basically, legitimately, he basically DDT. And I could have the wrong wrestling move. Maybe, maybe Shamrocks in the chat, shout out James Cam, could help me. But I think that's the move. He's a little DDT, sticks the head yep. under the arm, and you know, falls back and tries to slam his head into the ice. Um, scummy, scummy move. Just horrible, horrible, horrible hockey etiquette. You don't punch a guy when he's down. Number one, um, and then to go after a guy, and, and to go after a guy with no helmet. It's not. I mean, you're in the moment. Whatever. Blah 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 blah. Your thoughts on that part of it? I mean, just, just now. Do you think so? Actually, let me set the stage a little bit better. So, uh, Bill, uh, incredible Bill in the chat. Shout out, Bill. He first saw the video and said, "I don't understand what's so bad about this. Is it a reputation thing, or was it, you know, or or was it something that, or was it something that you know he legit? What he did was was legitimately bad." And as we started talking, I said, no, it was, it was pretty bad. I mean, he was, you know, you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. And and I, and I said, plus, it's Tom Wilson. So, obviously, it's going to be worse. And it started to realize to me, maybe it's more of a reputation thing than the actual act itself. Like, And the more I watched it, the more I kind of was, like, flip-flopping back and forth. So, I want your, like, is it the action or is it the reputation? I mean, if you take Tom Wilson out of it, use any player does that. Trent Frederick does that. 
you're 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 sitting there like, all right, that was dirty. Like, you shouldn't be doing that. Take Tom Wilson completely out of. I, 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 who was a Shamrock said he's a goon. Tom Wilson is not a goon. Tom Wilson is a skilled player. Yes. Tom Wilson is a dirty player. But he is not a goon. Correct. It's a goon is John Scott. John Scott's a goon. Trent Frederick. Trent Frederick. (laughs) I hear he's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Like John Scott's just the first one that came to uh, mind. Was it Steve Ott? Uh, Steve Ott. Some might argue cool. that uh, Sean Thornton in his day was. Right. Uh, also, maybe PJ. PJ, PJ Stock. Stock. Was a yeah. goon. I think Lucic is like, probably Lucic in his prime is probably the best parallel Bruins wise to Tom Wilson. To Tom Wilson, he is. Yeah. Yep. Cover right. Bruin. It's 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 Brad Marchand, but but Milan Lucic. I think Lucic is more similar. Just yeah. Because agreed. of size. Because of size. Correct. And toughness. Right. Agreed. Agreed. And so Lucic has skill. So take like, so take Wilson out of it. You don't think it's you don't think it's dirty, but it's not the outrage that that everybody had. Or I still think it was a dirty play, whether it was Tom Wilson or not. It's just I think it got over hyped because Tom Wilson has been in the media so much recently. I mean, he had the hit on Carlo. He got suspended for seven games. Carlo missed half the season. I still, to this day, believe if you injure a player, you should be out until that player comes back. That concussion wise. I mean, concussion yeah. wise. Because if that's the yeah. case, then Matt Cook would have never played another game, and he wouldn't have ended the career my whole time. Matt player. Cook is a goon. Matt Cook is a goon. Mm, he had some skill, but yeah, but yes, Matt Cook overall is a goon, goon. But yes. yes. Like, he should have, like, I mean, and, and then what was, I mean, that they also, like, that hit on Corrali was, you know, at first glance of it looked bad. When you look back at it, Corrali was kind of falling. Wilson did kind of lower his elbow into it, but whatever. There's still another shot to the head. Like, Wilson just kind of goes for the head, which is sad because he is a very talented player. When yeah. Tom Wilson took away his freaking dirtiness and actually played hockey, the Washington Capitals won the Stanley Cup. Honestly, if anything that is going to cause the Capitals from not winning the Cup, it's going to be Tom Wilson. I I don't... And goaltending. But but yes, but yes, I, I, I agree, is that he needs to be on the ice and he needs to be producing on the score sheet and the goal column and the assist column and the point column rather than the penalty minute column. Agreed. Um. Yeah. The next part of the Tom Wilson saga, did the punishment fit the crime? Now, this is where I really, I think it really boils down to action versus reputation. So you say take Tom Wilson out of it. So you take Tom to Tom Wilson out of it. Frederick, Frederick does this. Marshan does this. Marshan's a bad example. Bergeron does this. It's probably a max fine. That's that's probably what it is. It ends up being Tom Wilson. You can't take Tom Wilson out of it anymore. Now he's back. Now he's in it. He did it. He gets the max fine and gets no suspension. This is where I think the league got it wrong. This is where I think everything is. is, Correct. is this is where this whole thing went sideways. Just for the fact that it is Tom Wilson, you need, and the fact that their next game is against the exact same team. It's so dumb. Use your head. Mind you. Who's the guy? Who's the NHLPA guy? I mean, the NHL. Um, uh, George McPhee. No, 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 no. Not George McPhee. Um, he a former wasn't he part of like Violent Gentleman or goon. something? Like he he was a goon. He was goon. a goon. Dude uh, wants this. What the hell? Oh my god! I know. I can see his face, but I can't. I can't. I can't. Hopefully, somebody in the chat helps us out. Um, or I can, or I can always just just Google it. So um, I, I I got opinions about this player safety thing because I think George it's Paros nonsense. Yep. Paros, that's right. Goon. I have so, the George part right. The league screwed up and they made this worse. The player, the the Department of Player Safety is there to make players safe. They saw this had happened for better or worse. The dude's bragging about it like this on the stupid bench or in the penalty box. He gets a fine. What? Let's say, let's say, okay, he gets a fine. Whatever. What happens next? Scott Spear backchecks somebody because he's frustrated. Not as bad as what I would say Wilson gets. Scott Spear gets a game or two. It's the level of inconsistency. You're not wrong. And it's it's perpetuating, like, 
like that there's no punishment. Tom Wilson literally can do whatever the hell he wants. I, like he might kill somebody and get like a, a max fine. And I know I'm being hyperbolic, but then like what what did the league expect? Like Pete, it's a line brawl. If a defender got in the way, Char might have ended somebody. Like it's it's unreal. You have a Rangers team that has nothing to lose because they're out of the playoffs. And the best thing that they could do, probably in like their like mind, is damage the caps. Why do you think Ovechkin sat? Baxter, like Ovechkin's not hurt. They kept him out of the line of fire. It's so stupid. And I think the worst part about this Wilson thing is he doesn't care. He doesn't care. Like people are mocking him on the bench, and he he the the, the guy who mocked him gets thrown out but the game before Wilson doesn't get thrown out for mocking it's it's it makes no sense Char is out there asking questions and he's getting like 10 minute penalties the refs have no idea what to do the league has no idea what to do and the players don't know wh- where the bar is set so they're just trying whatever the hell else happens so that's honestly what worries me about this next game because we don't have tough I mean we have people who will throw down and they know their role but like are they going to get a suspension are they even going to get a penalty no like are they going to get like, expelled from the league nobody knows so how do you handle a situation that you do, can't predict an outcome because the league has no idea what they're doing? You would hope that in the playoffs, the 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 fine line of dirty to clean to a clean hit to a dirty hit gets more blurred in the playoffs. But you would hope that the league at least takes a good stance and at least you know and at least takes it takes some sort of initiative to, to to remedy that issue. But the league got it completely wrong the capitals got it completely wrong i understand having a guy have to atone for his sins and all that and all that stuff but the fact that the league let let us uh, let us let him get away with it and they have to play the rangers in the very next game and you're right the rangers have nothing to lose why wouldn't they go after him a full line brawl ensues and the dude wasn't even on the ice wilson wasn't even on the ice to start did he that get game. injured that game too you no, know, he didn't get injured. He he got into a no, the, no. the second he stepped on the ice, some goon from the Rangers tried to find him and lost, idiot. Well, yeah, that's bad. No, no, I thought he got went hit. Right and him. He left, went right at him. No, 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 no. He went right at him, and then and then obviously they fought or whatever, and then he he leaves the game because the the Capitals finally said, "We're not doing this. We're not going to put you in the line of fire." Somebody would have could have would have probably should have seriously hurt him. And, 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 and it's not it, – it, it, the league just was so – this just piss poor and even allowing him to – now, if, if the next game you play the Devils and you're not playing the Rangers or something like that, maybe. But the fact that you're playing the exact same team, what did you think was going to happen? And that that's game, not that fair game to was, him. That game got put into prime time. It was like maybe, yeah. maybe the league knew what they were doing and they knew everybody was going to watch. I, I couldn't tell you the last time I decided I was going to watch a Capitals Rangers, Rangers game <laughs> at the end of the season. So maybe the league knew what they were doing and they, they just wanted the ratings and they saw that as an opportunity. But And then the Capitals screwed up by even dressing him. Why even dress him in that game? You have nothing to gain from him going out there and fighting and having to to and maybe it's the pride and having to stand up for what he did or whatever. But why would you even dress him? Like why would you even put him in that situation? Why? Why? The whole An thing was just. Opinion, it's not fair to him. The whole thing the dude, was just, the dude was in danger because the league didn't take legitimately. Action. Legitimately, he was he was he was in and he got I would say borderline lucky that somebody tougher in like what was the rumor they were gonna bring up some guy from 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 the Wolf Pack who like yeah like Gersine or just, something the dude's a six nine skulls. unit that just punches concrete yeah he just busts skulls for a living that's just what he does and it's like I. I, I, I just don't understand. I don't understand the rationale behind it. I don't understand how you don't look at the situation. And, and that's the beauty of the NHL safety is they they do those videos and those long explanations and they talk about how every situation is different and every situation is unique. This is as unique as it gets. And this is like, I don't think you could have dropped the ball worse than what than, than, than the way that they did, honestly. I mean, and then the next night, I mean, Tom Wilson didn't get suspended for literally slamming someone to the ice. But was it Bujnevic got got suspended for I mean, a game for cross-checking Mantha in the face? I mean, he By the way, him Mantha the face, coming up on him as well. Also he was, a like, suspension. Mantha, yeah, Mantha went for a cross-check too. Bujnevic just got higher. Yeah, no, it, right. was, it, was, it was insane. If it was different, does does Mantha get... We don't know because nobody knows what they're doing over there. Yeah, exactly. I, but and, I, I, and then the Rangers got fined $250,000 for... Their like their comments. Oh, it's not even that they do have fined two hundred fifty thousand dollars. James Dolan just said, oh, "Whatever, I don't care. I'll pay it." Right. And then fired everybody 
Yeah. People <laughs> lost the people in the Rangers organization for saying the pretty much the same type of stuff that we're saying right now, and we're not out of line whatsoever. Lost their jobs or high paying high. High, uh, high profile jobs, and I believe it was the general manager and the, uh, the coach. What well, the coach just well, got the, fired? The coach just got yeah, fired. Yeah, the general Our website's about to get DDoSed by the player manager. safety. Yeah, right. Yeah. Who was it? The general manager and the assistant general manager got let go, and then I think David Quinn just got fired. Co- Quinn just got fired, but I think he got like relieved of his duties for the rest of the season. Mm. Because he wasn't coaching those games, the re- last few games, and now Chris Jury is the uh, the head coach, the GM for the the Rangers. I just it, it would just seem like such, and then like I can understand being upset with your general manager for comments and stuff, and you you can't question financial player safety or blah, blah blah. Why? What do you mean why? The NHL player safety dropped the ball and put people's life, put people's careers in in danger, and these guys speak out against it, and then they lose their jobs. Like what a horrible just chain of events for the NHL and and luckily it's such a minor sport in the U and it wasn't really like I mean if people are talking about it it, it it's a pretty big deal like even like the Tom Wilson thing you know it was on the it was on the local radio stations and all that stuff so like that's a pretty big deal but if this happened like basketball or something they'd be outraged that football they'd be outraged yeah it's, I, want, it's just I wonder a, how Chara thinks being on that team with him because char i mean char i don't obviously before this year wasn't a fan of him i'm sure because he had to keep him in line but like i noticed all during that charge just kind of skating around like it's kind of weird Nobody like i wonder if his teammates because let's say wilson does something like that and gets ejected guess who's at risk his teammates of course his teammates are they're gonna and they did i hope mantha i hope mantha sent him his dental bill because that's <laughs> your fault wilson yeah, it's not in not hockey wrong. if the if the league doesn't do anything and I'm not saying take the hits out of hockey. Like, you know, there's good hard plays and there's accidents that happen. But you're putting your teammates at risk. And you have to be, if you're capital, like, you've got to be kind of nervous. Because if Wilson does something, the Bruins have, like, Kevin Miller, Tenorti. I, I know you guys don't, like, don't think Frederick's anything big. But, like, he'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do what he has yeah. to do. And, and this is just the Bruins. Like, what about teams that are actually, like, have, like, goons? Like, you're putting your team at risk. And it's not. That's putting your team's future in jeopardy. And I don't mean like years. I mean like playoff run. What if that happened and Ovechkin played and somebody just took him out, like shattered leg or whatever? You lose, and that's because you're an idiot that yeah, had to he, do this mm-hmm. dumb stance saying how tough you were. Yeah, he, he's. No, he's I'm a, that, that's uh, this is something I hate. So that's my rant. He's you, not great. For he's to my he's not great for the game, but he's good. For, like he's not. He's not great for the game, but he's great for the game. Does, like, does that make sense? Like he's he's. He keeps things interesting, but yeah. not in a positive way. It's, Instead, it's, you should have be celebrating McDavid's 100 point in 58 games, and yeah, that incredible. was overshadowed. Or, yeah. or TJ Oshie scoring a hat trick uh, in the name of his father, who yeah. unfortunately passed away recently. There are good stories in hockey, right. and that was minimized because Tom Wilson decided to puff his chest out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, you're, you're absolutely correct, and it's 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 unfortunate the way that that whole situation just just uh, unfolded. Now, the act itself, mm, okay. But it's like everything else that came after it was just like this is just not not a good look for the league, not a good look for a league that's trying to make a push here in the United States, which is something that I want to touch on quickly too. Can but, I give you math real quick on this to just show what like this the fine and the what it meant? Go. So he made he had a five thousand dollar fine. If he made like what three million last year, that's point oh oh two five. I did the math already. Point oh oh two five percent of his salary. If you want to put that dinner in perspective. Bill. If you make fifty thousand dollars a year, that's like a hundred fifty dollars. It's like literally what you have in your wallet. It's yeah. nothing to him. I understand it's a league minimum, but if you put no, that so into perspective, that's, for that's a, a league, league person, maximum. That's a league, league maximum. maximum. I'm sorry, it's literally nothing. And I understand that's bargained for, or whatever. But and you know maybe that's part of the players' problem. That's when the power you gave. But anyway, that's just perspective from a from what that fine actually meant. Literally nothing. <sighs> Okay, we'll put it behind us. Get get all the that. Waba's been the one that's been ranting. Like normally, I'm the one that goes off. It's because you put right. me on camera, and that's where I do well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, you 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 put me in for, on Twitch, and that's that's my that's my. Well, I was like, it. wait, Twitch? We're going on Twitch? I gotta get I gotta get these takes. I gotta, I gotta have my best show in years. This is incredible. Get my Trav, takes out. Trav, we could have been doing this for a year now. I know. I don't know what I was. I just I don't know. I don't I don't understand. I guess my bad. I, I dropped the ball on that one. <laughs> Um, I forgive you. the 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 last thing I want to touch on, as far as the NH, as far as the NHL is concerned, is the TV contract that they um, signed and and have agreed to. Um, 
which if I'm not mistaken is partly ESPN, partly TNT. Is that do I understand that correctly? TNT USA. I don't understand uh, it. I just know it's not on YouTube TV. I know it's yeah, I know it's ESPN Plus. Um so and the, I know the NHL has already been on 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 NHL Plus um NHL Plus. Listen to me. ESPN Plus. Uh, ESPN ESPN Plus. Um now it's not going to be as as many games. So it got reached with Turner Sports, which is TNT. 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 Yeah. Um and I'm read, I'm I'm catching Turner Sports up. and ESPN we're getting from the from Shamrock. Yeah, both, both. That's why that's why I thought it was. Yeah, it was it was it's it's both. So they're essentially now going to make a legitimate effort to broadcast in the United States, which I think is gonna, which I think is awesome, and I think it's it's going to be good. It's going to be good for the league and the money that's going to come in for the league for this too. Pretty good, pretty good. Two hundred twenty-five million a year just from Turner alone. So pretty good, pretty good. But, the exposure is what matters, though. But, but they're going to hopefully get in front of more eyes. Exactly, it's the exposure, and and it's the. I think to the playoffs where all of the games in the playoffs are are televised and how exciting it is, and you're like you're, like games are on True TV and 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 uh, MSNBC, and you're like channels that you don't watch otherwise, um, but but you're watching because it's hockey playoffs. I feel like like I know it's not going to be to that extent, but at least now if the Bruins aren't playing and it's not Wednesday night rivalries, or Sunday afternoon at twelve thirty, you're going to be able to watch hockey games, and I think that that's I think that that's you're going to be able to watch out of market teams and. I think it's going to be a a good thing. But one other thing I'm excited for is TNT has the NBA. And say what you want about the NBA, their their marketing, their whatever is really really impressive and really really good. And one thing TNT does very well is their pregame, halftime show and postgame with Shaq and Charles Barkley is entertaining as hell. And so Currently, you have uh, what's her name there, Catherine Tappan and uh, Patrick Sharp with their you know two gorgeous selves, um, <laughs> just <laughs> just out there, just like talking into the camera and staring at, staring effortlessly into each other's eyes, and it's kind of dull and kind of boring. And any type of any type of you know pizzazz that you, that you've seen as far as NBC goes with like Mike Milbury getting suspended and that kind of stuff they don't they don't allow it i'm hoping that TNT will find themselves some entertaining ex players like a, the Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal of the NHL who that is i don't know but but you know entertaining play maybe like Roberto Luongo that's a perfect one perfect one great follow on twitter perfect mm-hmm. perfect he's funny perfect player if he were to be willing to do it to bring him on let him just talk and let him do his thing similar like Kendrick Perkins is sounding off against the Celtics right now and it's entertaining and it's exciting I think I think that I think that that's I think that I'm hopeful that they're going to be able to do something similar to it and I'm hopeful that I might be able to watch a little sports center and catch some hockey highlights every so often and not just be in the top 10 and I'm, I'm hopeful over the next you know seven years whatever it is that the exposure for the NHL in the United States is going to be uh, significantly increased. So I don't know your thoughts, but that was that's that's one thing that I wanted to, to just touch on quickly. Well, I know ESPN just hired Ray Ferrero and Brian Boucher, so that's good good grabs for them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, uh, like I said before, like I so I use YouTube TV, and I think a lot of people are cutting the cable cord, and the fact that like I can't watch hockey typically unless it's like national, I think is. Like I can't watch like local games. It's you my team. Watch. There's no Nesson? No, it's they don't they don't have a deal with Nesson anymore. They did when I bought it initially. So my options to watch hockey are very limited. But now if you have something that's integrated, like uh you know what was said here, TM TNT, TBS, HBO Max. Maybe if you have an HBO Max subscription, you couldn't watch it on your Roku or, or whatever. Maybe Disney, you know, it's not gonna be on Disney Plus, but like you know what I mean? Like that, you know, well, they own everybody. But it just gives can... more options. And they have the infrastructure too. You can upgrade your Disney Plus package to get the ESPN Plus and Hulu on it, and you can mm-hmm. watch it right on there, Waba. Mm-hmm. I'll, to, I'll to talk to my brother-in-law about that. He's the one who so I'm, managed I'm, my finances. Look at there. Waba mooching off of everyone. I don't mooch every half. <laughs> I'm the idiot that has cable, like full like HBO, <laughs> okay, all that stuff. Boomer. But also, <laughs> but also I have 
the ESPN Plus, Hulu, Disney Plus package, Netflix. You'll get that login. I get I get Hulu, <laughs> I get Hulu through my phone my phone bill, but I still have it in the the ESPN Plus and Disney Plus. I, I'm like stupid. It's I'm like I'm like that <laughs> idiot that like I'm the reason that cable companies are still in business because I just like don't I like can't I like I like I couldn't tell you the last time I sat down and watched a movie on like HBO or like Showtime or anything like that. I just I watch it all on demand, which I could probably do anyway. But I just I just don't get rid of cable. I'm that. No wonder you keep subscribing to me. I think you left it on uh, by automatic. Yeah, it was auto. Uh, Twenty eight months, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. It's auto. Auto done. Uh, where's that? Where's I get it? I get the invoice every three months. And charge Twitch four ninety nine. Huh? Well, I guess I should, <laughs> guess I resub to Waba. Ah, <laughs> uh, jokes, but not really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean it's it's good. I think it's good. It's definitely gonna. I think it's Pretty gonna. Much anything's gonna be better than what they had, right? I mean, it, oh, exactly. Which like, was oh, yeah. that? I mean, you get, you get one Wednesday night game and one Sunday afternoon game. Like, what, what does that do nationally? I mean, obviously, you watch all the Bruins games if you're a real person and have Nesson. But and Doc retired, so oh. that's like you know that was a big draw too. Which mm. yeah, not yeah, not anymore. Yeah. Even though, like, even like I've noticed a couple times that there's been. They've brought like uh, said that the Bruins would be on like NBC uh, SN, and then I go to NBC SN, and then they're not on there. It's like the auction or whatever, I and it's like they're that. on Nesson Plus, and I don't get Nesson Plus with my cable package, so I have to find other ways That's to thing watch it. That's another thing that drives me nuts is that when the Red Sox season starts and the Bruins, I'm a Red Sox fan too. I like baseball just you know just as much as I like. Man, eh, probably not true, but close second to, to hockey, but. Why am I watching game six of 162 in right. in in April or May of a Red Sox when I could be watching you know game 50 of 52 of of a of a Bruins that matters like we're playing for playoff positioning clinching a playoff spot and they get pushed to eat. like that's just like that's bad and and you know piss, what pisses me off even more is on the flip side in in October when when the Red Sox are are 60 games under 500 and playing games 150 of 162 they're still on Nesson and the Bruins still yep. get bumped get to Nesson plus. plus well they own it so that's what yeah, you get yeah but still i mean you, you, you got to you got to you got to have some I mean, that's the thing about the Red Sox is they have no pulse of what's going on with their fan base they just think oh, John Henry oh we're the Red Sox so oh, just everybody loves us so like that, that's 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 the that's that's his mentality, and it's 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 it, it just it sucks. But anyway, it'll be a good good national exposure for the NHL, and I think that that's that's important. It's something that was lacking, and I remember the old ESPN was a uh, Friday night Friday night not Friday night lights. That's a TV show. Uh, Friday night Great show. The Friday night or Saturday night games are the the old ESPN thing that they play for the college. They play for the uh, college Frozen Four. That sounder, John Butchergrass, and Steve Levy. Like the ESPN has, you know, NHL guys. So I think it'll be. Hopefully, they can they can bring some some good uh, some good. Bring uh, back Barry Melrose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's probably golfing somewhere, so it'd be easy easy find down the floor. <laughs> always with the Florida shirts on. But anyway, uh, anything uh, anything else Bruins NHL related? You guys want to touch on? I want to say I think this Bruins team now is better than the 2011 Stanley Cup Bruins. I'm not ready to accept that, but uh, I'm open. You know, no, skill wise, you might be right. Team wise, chemistry wise, probably not, but skill wise, you might be right. But, uh, I, mean, I don't know, they man. Have, they have the pieces. They, they were so it. they were so good one through four. They were stacked. They were they were they were they were pretty damn good one through four. I don't know. And they had like Wheeler and Sagan and like Yeah. I, well no, was, Wheeler got traded no, for Peverly. Wheeler. Wheeler was gone. He got traded for Peverly that season. That's oh my god. I'm just thinking that, that was a good team. That was Michael a good defense. Ryder. Too. I mean, I don't know. They they were I feel like that, that team had better depth. This team might have better high end high end skill. Oh, hey, I mean a lot of the players are still the same. The core players are still the same. Bergeron, oh, yeah, Marchand. Yeah. Krejci, a lot of the players are still are still the same. So that's a good take. I like that. I don't I don't know enough to disagree yet, but that's that could be very close. And it, I think a lot of it depends on what happens, what happens this year. What if they like, do they go all the way? Do they get bodied in the first round? I mean, I think with Lazard, uh, Corrali, and Wagner is probably 
the best fourth line we've seen since the Merlot line. Yeah, you're or probably right. Yeah, close I mean, it's to not, it. And it's, then, it's, I mean, it's, you, you, it's not the worst take I've heard in the last hour. Um, someone said they were <laughs> going to go sixteen and zero. So I mean, but no, I, 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 you might be right. And I think, I like I said, I think maybe skill wise they're better. But I think that team just had like it reminded me of uh, it reminds me of like the two thousand eighteen Red Sox, where like they had no business winning the World Series, but. But the, no, not the 18, the one before that, 2000, somebody help me, 13, 2013 World, Red Sox. No business winning the World Series, but they were a bunch of goons, a bunch of idiots, and just went out there and did it. And I feel like that's like that's like what that Bruins team was. Is that, yeah. they, you know, they didn't really have, they didn't really have any business being there. They just, they all came together and Nathan Horton was a stud. And so was Tim yep. Thomas. Much to my, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, this is my favorite part. And now that we're on Twitch, Waba can actually do it for real, for real, for real. Waba, go. Uh, if you had fun and you want to hear more amazing 16 and 0 takes, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Waba plays. Look at the you icon. Also find me. I know that's what I do. You can also Sharp. find me on Twitter, uh, Instagram, Discord, uh, TikTok if you're a Zoomer. Um, and YouTube uh, as well. So check me out there for some hockey things. Go ahead, Ryan. You can also find me over on Twitch.tv, Big Country 7914, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Um, you can actually find some of my articles over at the Boston Sports Syndicate uh, webpage. I will be having more coming out now that. Um, actually taking more time to write. So make sure you guys go take a look at those. Give those a read. Give me feedback because I've never written before. So I would love the feedback. I say it all. I've said it a million times and I'll say it again. The, our writers and our, our website, it trying to write and get your thought. Like I'm decent at talking about my thoughts like like this is like my therapy session i'm pretty good like luckily while i was on his couch and it's like i'm, I'm pretty good <laughs> but like trying to write oh oh my god it is miserable we have guys that just pump out articles like like two or three a week sometimes multiple in a day i'm like i'm just still trying to collect my thoughts on what i'm going to call the damn thing never mind never yeah. mind actually write it out it's difficult so credit to them check them out boston sports syndicate.com is where you can find all of the articles. And like these two, uh, Boston Sports Syndicate has also expanded their social media outreach. Uh, we're always on Twitter. I'm going to see if I can do this right. We're always on Twitter and Instagram at Boston Sports SYN. Uh, we're on Facebook, YouTube. Uh, now we're on Twitch, and we're also on TikTok, and that's Boston Sports Syndicate is the username on all of those things. Um, everybody that joined us here for our first edition of the live show, the Bleed Black and Gold podcast, Thank you guys so much for tuning in. The chat was pretty steady. I appreciate all you guys in there. I saw Incredible, Shamrocks. Um, obviously, Grez posed a question. Um, and uh, I know Court was in there. Um, Chris Henrique was in there early, or Chirik, I think his name is. I know Court was in there early on. And we had a couple of, we had a, a Boudry, Boudry 79. Shot us a follow there in the middle of the show. I'd love to give it out as we go, but sometimes you just get into the moment. I did in chat. I got you. I saw you in the chat. Yeah, thank you for that. So uh, if you guys are listening and you have Twitch, I think a lot of people are, are getting on to the whole Twitch thing. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. We'd love to uh, you know be able to interact with you live as we go. Um, and uh, I think that this would be something that I'm hopeful, keyword hopeful, that all of our shows will be able to do. Definitely every show that I'm involved in will be able to do this, and I'm hopeful that I can teach some of the other guys how to do it too. And um, obviously the three of us are, are on Twitch on our own. So we know how to do this kind of thing, but I got to kind of show the other guys the ropes a little bit and hopefully they can also get in on this, on this. And uh, the best part of it is, is that you'll be able to find us right here. You don't have to do any other, any other Twitch accounts. It'll all be right here on, on uh, Boston sports syndicate. So thank you guys for, for listening. Thank you guys for, for joining us on the Twitch. Um, I mean, I, if I read all of our promos, I feel like I'd be reading for, for hours, but I'm just going to do a quick one because it's new. Uh, SeatGeek, obviously, code BSS. You save yourself $20 off of a $50 purchase. Um, that's code BSS at checkout. Brand new offer coming in here hot. Um, Manscaped.com 
has has allowed us to promote them on our shows. Um, and they also have given us the hookup. Um, if you don't know what Manscaped is, I'm not going to go into it too much because I can't yet. Yet. But I will soon. But I will say <laughs> check out manscaped.com and use code BSS at checkout. You'll save yourself 20% off of your purchase. And you'll get yourself uh, free shipping. And um, basically they're a full body men's grooming company. Um, support the boys that support the boys. Support the boys. Your uh, Quote, your balls will thank you. Um, so we will talk about it more in, a, in, in, in future, in future shows, podcasts, we might even do a Twitch show, just basically, you know, thanking them. They, they, they've done us a solid and, um, you know, I'm looking forward to be able to share some of that information with you guys. Not yet teaser. Uh, so that's manscape.com code BSS. And, uh, as always, thank you guys for joining us and we will catch you next time. Go Bruins.